So, Ronnie's been here visiting today about some other bits and pieces, which I'm sure you'll have seen by now around Dungeon Saga Origins. But I thought it was a good chance to catch up. You seem like you're crazy busy at the minute. Crazy, crazy busy. <laughs> We've been kind of preparing and ferreting away, and yeah. now we're kind of doing the big reveal. Hello! <laughs> here we are, we're out. I think, obviously, if you've not back Dungeon Saga yet, go have a look. There's videos we did there. Yeah. Please consider it. The campaign will be ending soon I suspect yep. when this is going out so do have a look on that but uh, if you're not that if that's not your thing there's plenty of other things we've got going on I can't wait to hear about them spill mm. the beans Ronnie spill the beans <laughs> well first up and I think coming out right literally next month is the next couple of instalments in our dungeon adventures what we realise is lots of adventures out there talk about the monsters yes. that you fight against, which we think are cool and very good. But, you know, we like getting people introduced to the terrain that you use mm. from our terrain range. So um, the terrain crate adventures in the pack, you not only get the bodies and monsters that you fight against with a full narrative campaign, but you also get um, themed terrain to start making your dungeon oh, 3D. Excellent. So it's a great way of kind of, it's the almost the introductory set to the whole terrain crate range. Yeah. And um, you know, if you kind of buy each one of those, you've got a ready-made adventure for you and your RPG mates. There's all five edit, um, compatible. And by the end, you've also got a kind of perfect spread of terrain. Mm. So making life easy and building 3D terrain for your dungeons. We've strategically got Kings of War placed there. You must have something to tell me about Kings of War as well. We are huge. I mean, obviously, I think we, we've, we've got lots going on for Kings of War. Yeah. And, and not just Kings of War, but Panathor. Yes. So I think back in March, uh, early March, we started our big recruitment drive for Armada. Yeah. And that's kind of running from Salute, uh, from Adepticon through to Salute, where we've got 25% off the starter products. Yep. And fleet bundles. Uh, that's coming on the app, so you'll be able to build your armies on the app. So that, that's there. You can just tap in and get, and get a couple of your um, get your fleets designed and start playing. So there's been a massive recruitment drive into Armada, coinciding with the release of the Trident Realms fleet. By far the best. Yeah. Uh, so you've got all of your your, your boats and your narwhals uh, attacking those filthy um, other races that are on top of our, our water. May there's a book coming out which deals with those new fleets, a couple of extra fleets where you can reuse ghost fleets and um, pirates, so yep. you can reuse your other boats, plus interactive terrain, so volcanoes going off and fortifications um, blowing you up, attacking... The, so a whole load, more scenarios. Yep. So it's very much a living system. You know, We kind of launched it in the pandemic, load of the people loved it, got it. Now we're saying, right, come on, let's get getting some playing going yep. on and let's bring it out. We've got a fantastic thing called Warhol. We've worked some guys in Spain. They've built a full simulator of all the game with the fleets inside it, oh. totally free. So when people say, I can't get a game, you say, you can now, yeah. because you can go online. It looks awesome. That's going to be launching kind of April, May time. Okay. Uh, so going forward, you can just start playing and practice different fleets before you go and buy it. Um, nice. And of course, they're going to be available as STLs as well. So yeah. you can buy the um, the essentials kit, which you've got your map, your rule book, and your counters. And for those, I was going to say crazy people that <laughs> do the STLs, but those hobby super <laughs> talented people, uh, they can go along. And we've just not realized one of the hard things for us the resin, the casting. We did a video about yeah. how difficult getting resin made is. You can just print it. Yeah. And we're just releasing the fleets over the next six or eight months. Mm. They're all coming out. If you don't do that, just go to your local gaming store. Yeah. You can buy it. It's right there. Yeah. So lots for Armada. And then even more for Kings of War. We think that's all you know. It's all about plastics. Um, we've got Night Stalkers coming out. They're coming out on unit basis. Yeah. There's uh, two new plastic sprues for Night Stalkers. There's the Butchers and the Reaper Leapers. We've got Northern Alliance coming. Uh, we've taken out the PVC. Yep. So uh, the ice, uh, ice lions and berserkers yep. are now available. They're a kind of elite killy stabby death unit, and a whole new unit, which is a reveal here, <laughs> because we thought you know a bit of flying would be good in the Northern Alliance. So you got ravens. How can we make ravens or better? 
put a dwarf on it. <laughs> How can you make a, a, a raven with a dwarf better? Give the dwarf a bomb. <laughs> so the dwarf sits on the ravens flying in, throwing bombs down at you. They can, the birds can come in and attack you. So really characterful stuff. And that kind of goes to that whole Commonwealth idea of the, yep. of the, um, the humans, your basic fighting troops, they do the stuff. The elves are the elites that come in, the dwarfs, and you've got yeah. to be slightly crazy as a dwarf to sit on a raven. <laughs> They're the ones that come in. And, so, and that's going to be in the free dwarfs as well. So it covers a couple of options. Nice. Twilight King coming out later in the year. So tons and tons. Biggest year of, of plastics for Kings of War. Ever done. It certainly sounds like it. I mean, I, I remember you seeing you, you know you always had this kind of sort of a, a passion to replace a lot of those PVC, some of the resin stuff with plastics where possible. But it definitely feels like you can you can see the effects of that now. There's obviously been a lot of work in the background, and now everybody's starting to see that kind of yeah. like the fruit of that work, if you like. To chunk through, it was something we tried with Vanguard to just give you more options, but you know. A monopose butcher. Mm. It's good. It came out, but actually, these are better. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you do. This is a hobby. A hobby is, is is plastics and your core building plastics. You need a volume of them. You know that is the, almost the same price as STLs. And by the time you've shipped it or, or transported it, and then your resin pieces that kind of set you off yeah. and the joy to paint. And and I think that's where we are with with Kings of War. We wanted to make it a perfect joyous hobby. Mm. We've got background coming with all of these. So real IPs, instruction manuals for them. Uh, Ambush is bringing loads of new people in. And, you know, we're very excited for what Kings of War's mm. got coming up. Feels like the, the stars are starting to align now, doesn't it? Every, every, everything's starting to come through at the same time now. That sounds like a busy, a busy sort well, that's of. Well, so, yeah. so about six months. That's going to say. Just, yeah. that's, that's April. You know, this I was is just May, thinking you know, that. Bit. June, <laughs> and then we've got some really fun stuff. I'm yeah. going to be back up in a couple of months, and yeah. when we really uh, blow the bloody doors off. Nice one. I look forward to it. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think is coming in the next six months. But until then, Ronnie, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.